Okay, in this video I want to talk about how you can protect your website against access as based attacks. If you insert user supplied content anywhere on the page, have it run through the PHP function HTML entities. The text will still display just fine, but the attacker won't be able to launch attacks on the visitors. Don't allow untrusted data in script tags in an attribute name like div something equals something else or a tag name like something. Also never accept JavaScript and insert it into your page. Nothing will prevent XSS if you do that. Now if you want to put user supplied data into attributes like value, into CSS property values like font size, or if you want to put custom URLs into HTML URL attributes like ahref, then escape all characters with ASCII values less than 256, except for alphanumeric ones, with the and pound key xx format. This prevents an attacker from being able to switch out of the attribute. Many developers leave attributes unquoted, which means that they can be easily switched out of. For a good overview of ASCII characters, check out www.ascitable.com. There you can see that, for example, space is represented by and pound key 32 in HTML. As I said, you want to convert all non-alphanumeric characters, meaning all characters that aren't a letter or a number, into this format. If you want users to be able to use the HTML code, don't allow them to use HTML directly, but give them custom tags that are already very popular with message board software. You can do this with a simple regular expression. For example, when you want to allow users to make text bold, you write a regular expression that catches everything between the opening and closing tag and you convert that into the HTML tag for bold. Code your website in a way that the use of JavaScript is optional. This would allow users to browse your site while having scripting disabled in their browsers. Now, even if they visit a page that has a access, that has a XSS vulnerability and an attacker has taken advantage of it, this particular user won't be vulnerable because the code can't be executed. The big problem with this approach is that there are plenty of people who don't know anything about security or scripting or the inner, or the inner workings of their browsers which means they don't know how to disable scripting. This leaves the job to the web application developer to make sure that all user supplied data is encoded. Sadly, there is no way around this fact. The third kind of XSS, called DOM-based XSS, poses a different kind of challenge. Here, as said before, the attacker script doesn't have to be actually implemented into the HTML in order for the attack to work. Consider the example that I gave in video number one, where an attacker creates a page that uses JavaScript to read the URL and uses the name and okay, let me try that again, and uses the name parameter to welcome a user. Now the attacker gets you to visit the page through his link. What has happened now is that your browser has sent the contents of your cookies to the attacker. In order to defeat this, you would need input validation on the part of the JavaScript code. In this case, this is rather easy to implement. You only need letters and maybe numbers. However, if you, if you have more complex code, your script will quite possibly become vulnerable again because the input validation algorithm can be seen in its entirety by the attacker. The best way to solve this problem is to just have the server handle all the data that is supplied by the user and not handle anything with JavaScript. I also want to remind you that an attacker doesn't have to use the script tag to use JavaScript on your site. He might also use something like on mouse over equals alert you have been attacked. This is a good example that, illustri that illustrates that no matter what you can okay let me try that again. This is a good example that illustrates that no matter what kind of user input you are dealing with it absolutely can never be trusted. As usual, if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact me via email at arne at aachenmethod.com. Next up is part 3, where I talk about how you can find weaknesses in websites.